Editing speed all comes down to shortcuts. Which ones you use and how often you use them is totally up to you, but after over 3,000 hours of editing, I've got a few up my sleeve that I want to share with you today. So welcome back to Creator Reality, my friend. We're going to dive into DaVinci Resolve 19 and I'm going to show you a bunch of keyboard and mouse shortcuts. And I'm going to show you how to create your own keyboard shortcuts. So I hope you're having a great day. Let's get into DaVinci Resolve and see what we're working with. So first things first, we need some media in our project. So I'm gonna drag some files from a file explorer window and I'm gonna drag them right here into master. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna change my frame rate, I don't. And now I've got five clips right here in our media pool. This is the place to start from, right? And I'm gonna click on the first one, hold shift, select the first three, and then I'm gonna drag them down into the timeline area and it will create a timeline for me, it being DaVinci Resolve. So now that we have some footage to play with, let's do some editing. Before we get started, if there are any shortcuts I mention here, because I set mine up a long time ago, that when you press your keyboard shortcut on your computer and it doesn't work, you gotta map it yourself. So we're gonna go do that first, just before we do anything else. So we're gonna start by going to DaVinci Resolve and clicking on keyboard customization, which brings up this screen. You can scroll through them ad nauseum. I mean, that's that's until everybody's nauseous, right? You can do that, or you can search for something interesting in here like retime controls. So I typed in retime, and you'll see we've got retime controls, and this is a custom one I did, control shift R. We'll go, we will go over this in just a moment, but it's the retime curves. So if anything doesn't work that I'm showing today, it will work here. Yes, you can map it. Then you click close and you're done. So the first thing you need to learn how to do is to cut your footage. So if you click over here, nothing happens, right? But if you click in this special area at the top of your timeline, guess what? The playhead moves to right where you're at. So once you're here, wherever your playhead is, if you hold control and press B, it will do a break or a cut. See that? It has a cut in it now. If, for instance, we had multiple clips and none of them are selected and you get your playhead over the clips and you press control B, it will break everything. If I click the playhead and bring it over here, everything got cut. Now, if I control Z, and we'll go over that in a second, to undo, and then I select one clip and I press control B, now we have just clip, we have just cut that one clip, not both of them. We'll undo that again, and we'll put this back where it belongs. Actually, we can undo all of that. We will go over that one in just a second. There's a little bit more to it. But our next one up is delete and ripple delete. So if you're going along and you're cutting, right? We learned how to cut. And then you want to delete a clip. You can press delete. That does a ripple delete. Notice how everything over here moved back. If I control Z to undo that, that clip is here, but it moved. When I press delete, it moves everything over. So it gets rid of the gap. Now, if I press backspace instead, it leaves a gap. So if you wanna insert something into this blank space, you can do that easily now. And we're gonna undo all those cuts and we're gonna show the retime controls. So I'm gonna make two cuts here and I've got my clip selected. If I press control R, now I can change the speed and I can grab it over here and speed it up. Or if I move this clip, I can slow it down and if you want to see more on speed ramping, I've got a video right here for that. Come back when you're done watching that one. It's a good one, trust me. So with our retime controls shown, and you can hide them, you could press Control Shift R and it brings up the retime curves. Again, I go through that in the other video, so I won't dive into it now. But we'll close that down and we will undo those cuts. And then we're gonna make some new cuts. So for instance, if I have this clip here, and I go into my inspector, if you don't see it, it's right up here in the video section, and I zoom in way a whole lot. Just zoom in, 5.220, lots of zooms. Now you'll notice that this clip has a darker blue to it, and if I click on it, I can press Control C to copy, and this works just like any other Windows program. When I click the next clip or any other clip, if I hold Alt and press V, it brings up the paste attributes. And you can maintain your timing, you can stretch it to fit, 
You can click next to video attributes and select all of them. You can click next to audio and select all of them. And then retime effects, same thing. So you can do all of these changes from one clip to another. So if you are doing the same change for several clips, you can test it out on one and then copy it and paste it to the rest. In this case, we're gonna let all of them stay selected, but the one we want is really zoom. So if actually, if I unselect that and just click on zoom, and then we click apply, now we'll notice this one is zoomed in as well. So there we go. We'll undo that. And that's pretty cool, right? If you're getting something out of this video, boop the like button for me. Show me you care. Just spread the love a little bit. So what if I wanna do some playback? Space bar will stop. Space bar will end. Space balls. Nope, we're not gonna get copyright infringements today, but there's other ways to do playback too. And for that, we're gonna use the J, K, and L keys. So J will play in reverse, and if you press it again, it'll double time it in reverse. K will stop, and L plays forward. And if you press it again, it'll play forward faster. And you can press it a whole bunch of times and then watch your computer melt right in front of your eyes. But J, K, and L are very important if you're scrubbing through footage. Another big one is if you're zoomed into something or zoomed out and you wanna resize the uh, playback monitor to fit, then you need the Z key. Let's take a look at that. So in here, if I wanna pixel peep this car in front of me and I'm gonna zoom way in and now I don't know where I'm at, I can press the Z key and it brings us right back to uh, fitting this window. And it, you can also get to it up here and you see the shortcut here. Resolve is very nice about showing the keyboard shortcuts in all of its context menus, which is pretty cool. But Z does it here and in the color page as well. So next, I wanted to talk undo. Now, undo is control Z and you'll see that these cuts disappear. But there's a neat trick you can do is control plus shift plus Z will redo them as you're seeing now on your screen. This is really handy if you're doing some sort of A-B testing with you know, trying an effect or a zoom or something, or you move things around and you, you've got an adjustment clip on top of a piece of footage and you wanna move it back and you can use Control Z to undo it, Control Z to Control Shift Z rather to redo it, but you have 20 steps that you can do. And to prove it, I'm gonna show you. Let's get back in and resolve here. Under the edit menu, you have undo and redo, and then history. And look, it shows all the stuff, an original, I guess I don't have 20 steps here, but all these things, you can click on one of these to go to it. And it will reconfigure all your footage to match the, where this step was done. Pretty neat. Now, if we have a reason to move everything past our playhead down further in the timeline, you could click on it, drag it, but there's a better way. Click where you wanna start moving, hold Alt, press Y, and it'll select everything past the playhead. Now you can all drag it together as if it were one. Now, if you wanna select everything before the playhead, Control plus Alt plus Y does that. Now you can move everything before the playhead as one unit. This may be a custom one I set up, but your mileage may vary. When you've been doing this for four years and you haven't changed computers, you haven't had to redo your settings. Go figure. Now, another cool keyboard shortcut is to hold the shift key and press the right arrow key. Now, if I zoom in quite a bit, and we'll, we'll do another shortcut in a minute for that one, but I'm, I've zoomed in, right? Shift right moves one second forward in the timeline and shift left arrow moves back one second in the timeline. I use this all the time when I'm setting up multicam clips and it is hugely important for that. And it can also help you set up uh, transition lengths or clip lengths. You can just move the playhead, bing, bang, boom, you're done. And now my friend, it is time to move into the mouse shortcuts. The mouse in DaVinci Resolve works a lot like plenty of other Windows and Mac programs, but it does have some special functionality that I think you ought to know about. So stick with me here. Combining a keyboard and a mouse shortcut, if you click on a clip, and these are linked, see the linked icon right there? It selects the video and audio track. If, however, I click in the blank space here to deselect that, if I hold Alt and then click the video, it selects just the video. If I hold Alt and click on the audio track, it selects just the audio track. 
this can be handy for moving things around and doing some kind of J and L cuts. I talked about that in this video. But you'll notice that we now have this red text here and it's a time thing. So if I were to uh, deselect this and then click on this clip, they're still linked. And if I move them around, it's gonna overwrite stuff, right? So we're gonna control Z to undo that. But this shows you that they're offset from each other. So if I hold Alt and click on my audio clip and then move it back, boom. Now they're both lined up and they're still linked, which is pretty handy. And while we're here, if you right click on a video clip or an audio clip, you get a lot of things that you can change. Here's more shortcuts, things you can do with the clip, but you can do things like changing the clip speed or opening it in the fusion page or changing its color. If you have different kinds of footage that you wanna denote in your timeline for clarity for yourself, you can select different colors here, by the way. But now you'll notice that my link icon is gone. What if I want to relink those clips? I can select both with my mouse cursor, click and drag, and then I can right click and say link clips. And it'll give me my link icon because they're linked together now. Yay, we fixed that. This comes in really handy. If you've got a block of footage that you want to move around all as one piece, you can select it all with your mouse cursor and then right click and say link clips and it will link everything. Do note that if you go later and unlink it, it won't relink the corresponding audio and video tracks that were linked together before you linked everything. But it's a cool way to move chunks of your timeline around if you need to. And then we get to the middle mouse wheel. This thing is hugely important in DaVinci Resolve. By using our mouse wheel, we can scroll up in our video tracks. Notice over here, it's moving up and down. And the same thing with audio. And you can be anywhere in the timeline, but notice that if I'm above this dividing line here, see my icon changed? It's easier to see right there. I can drag this to show different parts of the uh, timeline better, audio or video. But if you are hovering over the video area, it'll scroll just the video. If you're hovering over audio, it'll just uh, scroll through that. Next, we wanna hold Alt, and that's gonna be our shortcut for zooming in and out of our timeline. Notice how it got real small, and then I can zoom in, and it's gonna zoom in pretty much to your playhead is where it wants to zoom in. But it's pretty neat to be able to quickly move around your timeline by zooming out, moving in here, versus trying to play through or whatever. But if you click here, by the way, if you click here with your middle mouse wheel, and drag, you see I'm dragging the timeline around without moving the playhead, so I can move. It's not quite as quick, but if you combine it with zooming out and then moving, you can move huge amounts of time at once. Pretty cool stuff. Next, we're gonna hold shift and scroll, and watch carefully these, uh, these film strips here. They're gonna get bigger and smaller. So if you really wanna see what's in the frames a little bit better, or make it easier to click on, you can alt and scroll up, to zoom in and alt and scroll out to make those smaller. Zoom, scroll, It's I know it's confusing. Same thing with the audio. You can make your waveforms really tall or really short. And by the way, if you are zoomed in, control and mouse wheel up and down moves around the uh, timeline as well. So you can move it by holding your mouse wheel and dragging, or you can hold control and go forward and back on your timeline. There, now you should have a much easier and faster time of editing in DaVinci Resolve. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, boop the like button and please consider subscribing. I bring you videos showing my workflow and editing tips and tricks in DaVinci Resolve, as well as the content creator gear that I use in my regular workflow. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm always happy to help out. If you wanna know what my render settings are, they're at the end of this video where I show you how I film travel videos. And and then click on this video if you want to see one that YouTube picked out especially for you. Hope you're having a great day. John out.